Um, and I'm delighted to introduce um, to you from the Chief of Information Technology Sector at Kuwait's Communication and Information Technology Regulatory Authority, CITRA, Mr. Mohammed Al Tura. Let's warmly welcome him. Now, he's going to be speaking this morning on a presentation entitled National Cybersecurity Strategy. Welcome. I hope you still have uh, the energy for today. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I'd like to thank the organiz organizers for giving us the opportunity for the first time to participate in this great event. So, as you heard so far, what's happening? I'm trying to point now, yes. My name is Mohammed Toura. I'm the uh, chief IT sector in CITRA, as our abbreviation for Communication Information Technology Regulatory Authority. And uh, to make it easier to understand what does chief IT sector means. It's uh, the national CIO of Kuwait. So we are going to regulate the IT telecom sector so that we can really empower these both powerful technologies to make people's life easier, improve our and develop our economy, and of course support innovation. So let me start with the economic situation of cybersecurity. Uh, basically, every year, the World Economic Forum come up with the Global Risk Report. That is about 29 type of risks in the world, economic risks, and every country has to look at those risks and see what are applicable to its economy and try to mitigate those risks by doing a lot of stuff to minimize the risk of their economies. So if you see in uh, the, the, the coordinate, the magic coordinate of the economic risks, you will see there are many different types of economic risks that exist in the world, such as water crisis, such as political unrest, such as uh, government uh, failing to balance budget, for, that's gonna drive a lot of unemployment. And nowadays, we have something called cyber attacks. Every dot that you see in the color purple represents a cyber security risks. And uh, it depends where that risk is in the coordinate that represents uh, how bad this risk can be to your economy. So if you look at the cyber attack, I don't know if you can see that on the screen, on the uh, top uh, left side of this coordinate, you will see that the most dangerous risk that any economy can have, and one of them definitely will be cyber attacks. So that, that would give you a, uh, an idea how serious this problem is to the economy. So, we established as Citra, uh, started going live last February, or rather than fe uh, February 2016, and the top priorities for Citra is to come up with a national cybersecurity strategy. And this strategy will be driven on the national scale. And that strategy will not be implemented by Citra alone. It will include all of the stakeholders that is pretty critical to, to our economy and our national security. So we are version one. Uh, this strategy shall be uh, approved by the Council of Cabinet very soon. And then you'll see us going live uh, all over Kuwait to make sure that we are a resilient nation against cybersecurity attacks. Uh, so if you look at the, I just want to make simple highlight to the strategy. We have simply three objectives to make success out of the national cybersecurity strategy in Kuwait. The first objective is to create awareness across the nation, uh, whether it's the public, whether it's academia, whether it's uh, people, normal users who work in such organizations such as government, uh, private sector, and uh, e-commerce, oil, what have you. This is, has to be ongoing, as this is a forever journey, uh, because as long as we are using technology, which is growing in our lives every day, 
You cannot be efficient with a smartphone on the individual level. You cannot be efficient uh, without having a proper IT in your organization. Same thing, you cannot be efficient economy without using proper technology in it, uh, which is very secure to protect your economy. So that's the first objective is create awareness across the board. The second objective of the national strategy is to protect our critical national infrastructure. And I'm gonna go through that uh, when I display the framework. What do I mean by critical national infrastructure, CNI, is those organizations who are very highly critical to our economy. And in Kuwait, definitely we have a very high risk as far as our economy, a single industry driven economy, so we have to be very resilient in, to make sure that our economy is growing, it's providing opportunities, it's making people life living uh, high standards, and uh, definitely supports innovation. The third objective, as you see, would be relationships. The relationships with all the stakeholders, the relationship with our strategic international partners, and of course, the industry, who are play, gonna play a very big role to make this happen. Oops. Okay. So, the objective of the cybersecurity program this strategy will be a three-year strategy, and then we have to come up with a second edition uh, once we achieve uh, this strategy, going by priorities to this nation. Uh, Going to focus on mainly two areas. The first area is the operation of security among all the critical national infrastructure, such as oil, banking, utilities, networks. There will be also the mid-space, which I'm going to talk about, Midspace is the mobile operator, LTE network, ISP network, Kuwait information network for the government, and the national backbone. These are a very critical infrastructure to make sure they are resilient and uh, not being attacked uh, from a cyber uh, point of view. And uh, from there, we have to establish a, uh, a relationship with all of these CNIs, we have to come up with a standards that nobody falls under, and we have to make sure that those standards are being implemented and compliant uh, so that we may, you know, we have to always become uh, more resilient as we go. Uh, the second thing is the awareness and the alerts coordination between those, between this community, the CNIs. We definitely in our strategy are going to make a very, uh, integrated uh, communication between each other, so we tell each other what is happening, where are the threats, what are we being attacked. As you know, uh, Citra has a good advantage by owning the international internet gateway, so we'll be able to monitor all the traffic that's going in inside of Kuwait. And anything that's very um, dangerous, rest assured that everybody will know about it and everybody will take actions. And we we will work together as one team to make that happen. This is not only one organization responsibility. This is everybody's responsibility. And during this journey, we'll be able to evolve. This technology is going to be increasingly using in Kuwait. Kuwait is a digital society, by the way. We have more than 80% smartphone pen penetration among our society, so that gives you the idea that we are digital. We are number two in the world in terms of LTE broadband mobile subscription. We are number one in the world mobile subscribers versus population. So you, you get to see a lot of individuals carrying more than one mobile. And uh, on the other side of the equation, so we talk about the operations now and what is our role in terms of working with the critical national infrastructure of this country making sure everybody is sort of a degree of resilience so that they, uh, they have a very strong defense in case of a cyber attack. On the other side of the story, we're talking about the skills and awareness. So we'll be on, all ongoing sorry, uh, to provide an awareness program to the public and we establishing also an academy to create uh, resources and knowledge among all the uh, stakeholders, uh, people and engineers, we have to make sure that we are producing the right people as a journey 
to make sure that Kuwait is being a resilient nation and uh, experienced in cybersecurity. All of that will definitely give us uh, a really high grade of uh, cyber uh, security resilient nation. So, after uh, six months of uh, a national cybersecurity committee led by my boss, uh, His Excellency Mr. Salim Ladena, members from that committee were from oil sector, from banks, from utilities. We come up with a, a national strategy framework so that uh, we can be really uh, working in a very simple way of being resilient nation in Kuwait. So, how are we going to work together uh, in the future with the oil sector, with banks, with utilities, with the stakeholders of this? We definitely have to have an intelligence platform that we all have to go and see what is happening. And from that platform, all of the uh, stakeholders will understand their threats and how they uh, are going to uh, accommodate those threats and mitigate them. Uh, from that, that will be uh, definitely uh, a lot of communication happening between us and the stakeholders to make sure this function is working. Uh, the CNI also will have a policy and standards to follow. Every country now, you heard a lot of countries putting so much billions of dollars of investment to protect its economy and national security. And Kuwait now is part of this game. This game will never end. It's a forever journey. So we have to come up with a, a standard and policies that everybody has to follow. And we have to monitor this policy. We have to make sure everybody's compliant to this policy. And when I talk about we, I don't talk about Citra only. I'm talking about Citra, the stakeholders, and the industry itself. The industry will play a huge role in making success out of, out of this journey. So, uh, having the intelligence platform, having the policies and standards to be implemented on the national scale, uh, we definitely need a body that's going to sponsor us to make this success. So they will be definitely a, a higher committee led by the prime minister, like any other country in the world, to make sure that Kuwait is definitely serious about cybersecurity. So they facilitate, this higher committee will facilitate all the challenges that we are going to face to make Kuwait resilient. And uh, definitely uh, from there, there will be a national security program committee to make sure that all of these programs are going smooth. Uh, and they will be giving reports to the higher committee of the status of the nation in terms of cybersecurity. Our relationship doesn't end this way. We will be working with the Ministry of Defense uh, because they also have their own different way of analyzing the electronic warfare. Like my, the uh, person that was in the previous uh, uh, session talking about uh, countries like Russia and others trying to destroy other countries' cr national critical infrastructure. So this is part of also a coordination with the Ministry of Defense that we have to come up with. Uh, on the ground so that we always updating each other and also the Ministry of Interior as they go for the e-crime, the fight and the anti-terrorist we also have to integrate them to this framework to make sure there is an intelligence exchange between us and uh, all the stakeholders uh, from, from a security point of view. So for the middle part of this picture you see the National Cyber Center and that's what the strategy is going to drive to establish. CITRA will establish something called NCC, National Cyber Security Center, which will have a multiple functionality. It will have academy, so for those who want to be trained, and that academy will be driven by the uh, industry, not by CITRA. We are just coordinating with, between the industry and CNIs to make sure there is a, a bar that nobody falls under in terms of the quality of the people that's going to be there. And also, we will be able to establish uh, the uh, awareness program to the public from that center. Meanwhile, that center will be having intelligent platform. It will be having the, uh, uh, the alert system platform with all of the CNIs and the stakeholders. And also, 
we will held a lot of uh, uh, sessions that we exchange information as well. Plus, uh, that the uh, incident response uh, and all of the alerts that comes from that center should be, you know, should be smoothly implemented among all the community. So, who are the CNIs again? Uh, they will be uh, an oil and gas and utilities and finance CNIs plus the mid space which I spoke about, the national uh, backbone, the LTE networks for the mobile operators, the ISPs, and the uh, Kuwait Information Network. Good news is that we are regulating the telecom industry, so we, come up, we are coming up with a, uh, additional clauses to our licensing contracts with the mid-space, because as you know, Citra has to license companies like Zane and Oredo to practice in Kuwait, and now, with this license, there will be a cyber security clauses that's going to make sure, legally speaking, those mobile operators will implement the highest standards of the cyber security. They are the mid space. They are the one who are sitting between the international internet gateway and us. We cannot reach the internet without going through them. So we have to make sure that environment is very resilient. And uh, one of the function, a major function that's going to be done with the uh, NCC is to establish a national SOC, Security Operations Center, that will communicate with every single SOC of the CNIs. So, for example, KOC have their own SOC, and we, we make sure that our SOC will be pretty much integrated to the industry SOC so that we can easily exchange information and uh, threat intelligence and make sure everything is being mitigated. Uh, if you look at the, uh, uh, the mid-space again, uh, it's everywhere. It's, uh, Kuwait is very uh, advanced in terms of broadband LTE network, so it's very important to make sure the standards uh, and legal framework will be accommodating those standards. So this framework will be accommodated by legal framework that's going to be approved by the Council of Ministers so that we have to have a legal uh, advantage as well for those who are not compliant because they are threatening the economy of this country. So having this picture will give us a strong economy and national security. Oh, sorry. My last slides. So what would be uh, the priorities of uh, the first phase of the three years is basically we need to understand what are the risks we're going through. So we are going to bring the industry to tell us what are the risks and the, the, uh, the holes that we have in our uh, cyber security. Uh, as you know, we never work a, in a collective notion in this. We always have worked in silos. You see the oil sector, they are together. The banks, they are together. The, uh, the telecom sector, they are together. But we have not have this collective notion. And this is definitely Citra's responsibility to make sure that everybody in the, uh, in the stakeholder committee We'll work together very closely to make sure Kuwait is a safe uh, uh, country as far as cyber attacks goes. So when we do those risk assessments, we're going to come up with projects that's going to add to our resilient uh, status. Uh, also, we're going to look at how we're going to establish our uh, national security center. What are the components required? How are we going to implement that? What are the people needed to do that? So that's also one of our priorities that we are going to focus on in the short period. And uh, the third priority will be assess uh, the maturity of the organizations and see what are the gaps that's going to be accommodated as well. The threat intelligence is one of the priorities because Right now, we have so many threats, but as you, as you see, you don't see communication that's happening on the national scale to warn people about those threats. 
you will see that uh, organizations are dealing with threats on an individual basis. And uh, that's definitely uh, not going to help us on the long term. Maybe it will work on the short term, but as the thing of cyber security, uh, the subject of it is going to be more complicated as we are evolving with technology more and more every day, then we have to work as, as a solid one team. Uh, information sharing and uh, intelligence is extremely important in this process. Uh, we're gonna focus on awareness program because as you know, uh, being proactive helps a lot. As you see, your co uh, our colleagues uh, said that phishing emails, uh, some information, they malware come to you through email and average user doesn't understand the magnitude of the problem that can be faced in the organization. So they take the organization into a risk and click on that document or that link and without knowing there's a malware in your environment, collective information, trying to set up potnets so that you have some controls to be done by other people externally from the organization and uh, the geopolitics as well is, uh, is very uh, serious in this region right now so that we have to be sure that uh, we make people understand. And that's not only goes to the normal user. We're talking about the education system uh, in Kuwait, uh, the, the universities and uh, the, uh, the K-12. to They always, they, they have to be aware as well. And the training syllabus that we're going to come up with is a very high priority uh, for uh, all of the CNIs to make sure the people, uh, they are very uh, aware and uh, high quality uh, in terms of this uh, subject so that they can contribute better and give a high quality execution to this operation. I, you know, I hope this is uh, very beneficial to hear. Uh, we, you're going to see us a lot in the next coming months. I have a team already here. I cannot see them. They, the light is against my eyes. But uh, we have a very good team, a very selective team, working every day to make sure that we are going to reach uh, a success uh, to make Kuwait resilience in this strategy. So uh, this is all I have to say. If you have any question, please feel free to ask. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a remaining three minutes on the clock. If you've got any questions, we've got time for just one, please. Uh, let us know your name, your company, and your one question. Please raise your hand. We've got two roaming microphones around the hall. The alternative, of course, Mohammed, is that everybody is very hungry. We've got our one question. If I can have your name, your company, and the one question, please. Dr. Reem Shemri from KOC. Uh, my question is about the sands. Uh, as you are aware, Mr. Mohammed, that there's sands in UAE and KSA that they are initiating some initiatives for building the electronics soldiers and armies for these nations, UAE and KSA. For, uh, for example, UAE has started this program since 2015, uh, and this is the third time they run this gamifications and, and recruiting these electronic soldiers from all over UAE. So what is your plans from Nationwide to get these sons in and start recruiting our e-soldiers? That's a very good question. Uh, we actually working uh, with the Ministry of uh, Defense very closely and they are building this type of function. Uh, from our point of view, we are a civil organization and uh, we establish a standard and compliancy to every critical national infrastructure and audit on, you know, on the regular basis to make sure they are resilient as far as the civil responsibility. But with our colleagues, of course, with the Ministry of Defense, uh, they will be able to also build, they are in the progress of building an electronic army. We do have a function for penetration testing to make sure that uh, there are some uh, reports to be generated from us to ed educate uh, our stakeholders for their vulnerabilities and uh, system uh, holes and risks that they have. But at the same time, uh, we remain civil and uh, we work very closely with the Ministry of Defense uh, so that they will have the function of electronic, uh, electronic, I would say, red team. 
uh, something like what you see in the Ukrainian incident, uh, I'm sure that uh, definitely this is very beneficial to have a team to stop those uh, from, from doing any damage from the external, uh, from an, uh, external countries. So that would be uh, hopefully happening by the end of this strategy. Thank you.